All right, everybody, getting ready to start finishing the bar top. I've got a video out of building this bar and then uh, a video of building the, the pallet bar stools. This whole complete bar and bar stools are made out of pallets, but this top is complete um, one slab of uh, black walnut with live edges on both sides. It's in the video. I'm going to be using this upstart epoxy. I've watched a lot of videos on it. It's a one-to-one -one ratio for mixture. I'll put a seal coat on it first, and then uh, I'll put the flood coat on. And I'm hoping it turns out good because I know this is going to be a beautiful piece of wood here. And uh, I'll turn you back on when I get outside. I'm going to take this outside and start playing it and sanding it. That way I don't have all the mess in here. So this is going to go outside. And I think I'm going to do it on the driveway so all the sawdust just blows away. So stay tuned. I'll show you a little bit more here. Here's the length of it, here's the back, everything, here's the bar stools. I'm going to cut the end of it off just a little bit, but I think I'm going to, I'm going to do the finishing first before I cut it, that way it doesn't splinter at the end. And then uh, I think I'm going to do the underside first, that way I can see what depth to put my planer on and sand in. So stay tuned, I'll bring you back when I get outside. and. We start work, working on this. Thanks. All right, everybody. I got the bar top outside here. I got it on the trailer. I got the trailer leveled up. I'm going to take my planer, hand planer, and I'm doing the bottom side first just in case. I don't know. I just want to see how this is going to turn out. And then uh, I'll use the belt sander to, to finish it. I'll go up from uh, rougher grit to uh, finer grit sandpaper until I get it done. But I'm just going to do this bottom a little bit. And then that way I can put a seal coat on it before I do the top. But I want to get this all over. Just, just see how this planer is going to do. I got this so it's only going to take off a minimal amount of product right now. I'm just going to do it, take it, take my time and do it. I don't want to take much off of it, so we'll get back to you. It's going to take me a while, but I'll, I'll get back to you when I get this plane down a little bit better. All right, everybody, I just got this done, done planing the bottom of this. I just wanted to see what the grain looks like. I mean, this is not sanded. This is just planed. But I did long linear strokes, put a level on it. It's probably not the way to do it, but... If I had somewhere, there, there's nowhere close to me that's big enough to handle a, a board this wide, or I'd run it through a, a big planer, but I just wanted you to see what this, the grain's looking like. Man, it's beautiful wood. I hate to mess, I don't want to mess this up, but like I said, this is the only way I got is just this hand planer, but we'll get it. And uh, once we get it sanded, it's gonna be beautiful. And I just want you to know too, this board's been drying for over two years. So make sure it's, it's completely dry before you try to do this because you'll have all kinds of problems with your epoxy but uh yeah i just wanted to show you that i'm gonna flip it over i'm gonna do these sides here where the bark was i'm gonna do them with uh, a wire wheel or something try that if that don't work i'll get a different palm sander or something but uh i'm gonna flip it over and do the top this took me quite a while here but i mean and, and i didn't get it perfect to like right here on this edge is going to be cut off anyway about six inches back but uh, this, like I said, this is the bottom. I just wanted to get it co as close to level as possible. And then this way, now I can put a seal coat on it. And then uh, we'll, we'll go to the top and we'll get that done. All right, everybody, I got the bottom all plain like I showed you. And I got this side here all sanded smooth with a palm sander after I did the wire wheel. I haven't done the other side yet. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and plane the top first get that to where it needs to be then I'll come back and finish the sides and I'll show you what it's all looking like when when I get that part done but I figured there's no sense sanding right up to here if some of this is going to come off anyway so 
I'll bring you back once I get this top plane down and get it nice and level. And then I'll, I'm going to do this other side with the wire wheel and some sandpaper. And then once I get this planed, I'll show you what it looks like. Then I'll have to get the belt sander out and, and go from coarse to finer grit to get to our final, our final, what we need before we... Alright everybody, so I got the top planed, looks really nice, I took a level down it, it's completely level. I didn't tell you before, but I, I put a jack stand underneath the back and then I, uh, and I cranked up the jack on this, this trailer, so the trailer is completely level. Took the wire wheel, went around both edges, took a hand sander, palm sander, and smoothed this all out. Next step's going to be to take the, the uh, belt sander and this, like I said, work from like 80 up to probably 200 and get this smooth as I can possibly get it. Alright everybody, just got done sanding on this and uh, I went from the belt sander to uh, with 80 grit to 120, got it all nice and smooth, then I went to the palm sander, I went from 150 and now I'm at 200, I'm going to do one more coat or one more time with the 200 or 220, I just wiped it off with a damp cloth so you could see it, I was glad that finally the sun come out and uh, if you move it just right, I mean it, it's almost like a holograph to where, I mean the the grain just changes so and I'm going to take this end like I was going to cut off about six inches anyway because it's too long but I think I'm going to take this and I'm, I'm going to scribe a line across there and I'm going to I'm going to round the end and then I think take the router and go around that and kind of do a half round on the top and then sand that that way you get a better grain once I get it sanded instead of just a, a flat cut off end so I got I got about six inches to work with so I'm gonna try it with my jigsaw. I don't know if that'll I hope that'll cut it. This this wood is super super hard. So I'm gonna try it first and then we'll see what happens. I, I, I just think I'd like to look at that rounded end better than than a, a square end. So we'll see what happens. I'll turn you back on after I get it cut and then uh we're getting ready getting ready to go to epoxy here pretty soon. Man. All right, everybody, I'm getting ready to mix this epoxy resin. I have them measured out. There's a lot of calculators for measuring your epoxy, but go by your brand. And uh, I'm using Upstart Epoxy, so go to their website or whatever brand that you choose to use if you're going to use epoxy. This is a one-to-one -one mix, so I've already got them measured out. i got part B here, part A here. I'm going to pour them in here and mix them, and you got to mix it for quite a while. I'm doing the underside of the bar first. If this doesn't look as smooth as the top, it's because it, I didn't smooth this as, as much as I did the top because, like I said, this is the underside of the bar. You're not going to seal it. This is just a seal coat. This is to seal the wood, make sure nothing happens. When this dries, I'll flip it over. I'll put a seal coat on the top, let that dry, and then I'll put a flood coat on to make the final thickness. But, uh, yeah. There's a lot of good videos. I'll put the video for this in the link in, in the description. The link for this video in the description for uh, the calculator for figuring out how much epoxy you need. And then uh, go check out my buddy Coyote Whacker. I'm wearing his hat. He gave me this hat off Pennsylvania at the rendezvous. But he's doing a river table right now that is looking really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and pour these. Like I said, they're pre-measured. All different um, manufacturers have a different ratio, so just make sure you go by the ratio of of the type of epoxy you're using. I'll set that over here, and I got plastic down all over the whole thing underneath of it, so any drips, you know, I don't have them all over my floor. Start mixing this as you pour it in. Once you start mixing this. I mean, you got quite a bit of mix time here. Um, probably six minutes of mix time, at least. So once you start mixing this, you have about 30 minutes of work time with it. So that one, once you mix these two together, that's when the chemical reaction takes place. And, you, and it says on the thing that you have about 30 minutes 
of work time. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this for a good five, six minutes. I'll turn you off. Then I'll bring you back when I uh, get ready to start pouring it on. All right, everybody, I got done doing a mix in this. I mixed it for about seven minutes. I mean, I mixed, mixed it really well. So now what you want to do is pour it out evenly along the table. And like this is self-leveling. So what you want to do is just let it do its thing. But, uh, and then I'll scrape it over the edges. Like I mean, I will take the torch to it and get all the air bubbles out and everything like that, but like I said, this is just a seal coat for the bottom. But it's really, I mean, I can see just now, it's already bringing out the, the green in that wood. And when I flip this over to do the seal coat and the flood coat on the top, it's, it's going to be amazing. So, this, it comes with this scraper, you just want to move it around. Just kind of move it to the edges. Don't don't go all the way off the edges yet. Just get get your entire surface covered. And like I said, it's going to self level. All right, so I got it mostly covered. So I'm going to start working it towards the edges. I'm going to let it go off. I'm not worried about sealing up the end grain here too much because I'll do that when I. Uh, That'll, that'll, I'll get that when I do the top. And then I'll go around the edges. I got a foam brush here that came with the kit. I'll go around the edges and uh, just wipe the edges to keep from getting all the uh, drips. And I think we're good right there. I mean, that's that's our seal coat right there. We use a torch or a blow gun. A lot of them use torch. Yeah. So you just go like that. Just keep moving it so you don't burn it. But yeah, those bubbles are gone. Completely takes the bubbles away. Just watch your plastic on the end there. Oh wow. That looks like glass. Wow. I am impressed. That looks nice. I'm going to have to monitor this for probably an hour or a couple hours just to make sure no bubbles come up. Like I said, this is the bottom, not a big deal. And then I'll just torch them as they come up. I'm going to go around with this, uh, with this foam brush and just make sure I get all the drips on the sides. The grains and the sides, the sides are all live edge, so and they'll, they'll be done when, when uh, I do the top. They'll get sealed. This is still running off. It's still self-leveling. There's still a few air bubbles coming up. Like I said, I'll keep continually going back with the torch and take care of the air bubbles, but this is going to seal it. Oh my God, this, this is such a beautiful piece of wood. I can't wait to do the top because the top is sanded so smooth. All right, I just wanted to show you what the back side of this looks like. It's all completely, it's the next day. I waited until the next day. I thought I'd get the seal coat on the top last yesterday after this but it it wasn't quite dry and i didn't want to mess with it but i mean it's dry now and it's just it's beautiful and like i said the bottom i only uh the only thing i did to the bottom was run my my planer on it i didn't even sand this and this looks nice i mean i'd be happy with this for the top but we're gonna go ahead and flip it i'm gonna flip it over all right everybody I just got done putting the seal coat on top of the, uh, this is the top of the bar. It looks really nice. I've been going along it with the torch and popping bubbles, but I think they're about done. I don't know if I ever showed you after I did cut the end of this and, and I rounded it off. It looks it looks really cool. I like, I like the way that turned out. I said I was going to cut that and round that off, but I think it looks nice. I videoed, I was videoing uh, when I was putting this seal coat on the top you can see the live edge here better but uh so for some reason i had a card error and i lost that footage so here's what it looks like this is just a seal coat but it looks really really nice i mean i got the seal coat 
all done. It looks really good. I mean, I would almost leave it like this. I really would. It looks beautiful. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and scuff it just a little bit with this 220 grain grit sandpaper. There is a one little divot here, but I mean, it's not bad. I mean, like I said, I would leave this, but I'm going to scuff it just a little bit to give it a, a mechanical bond for the when I pour this flood coat on. I'm getting ready to mix that up right now. I've watched a ton of videos and you know I they said it looks like you're ruining it but they, they all say that's the beauty of epoxy once you sand this down just a little bit once you pour that flood coat on it it fills in all those cracks and scratches and uh, and just they all go away so I'll just sand this down lightly and I'll wipe it off with a cloth and then I'll mix up my flood coat and I'll bring it back when I uh, pour the flood coat on. I'm sorry folks, to put this flood coat on, I don't know what happened. I got another card error. I don't know how much of it I got, but uh, I poured the flood coat on. I dabbed it with a with a brush. I don't know if I got, I don't think I got that part. I went over and dabbed the whole thing with this brush to break the surface tension of from the trowel, from the trowel lines. And, uh, and then I just went over it with the with the torch and, and got rid of all the bubbles. There's still a few bubbles here. Not very many. There probably won't be that many this time because it's already sealed. But we're going to let this dry and I'll keep going around it, the bottom edge with the brush to get the drips. But sorry I lost that footage of me pouring. I don't know if I lost it or not, but if I did, I'm sorry. But me pouring this flood coat out. But it's, it's going to be done here tomorrow. So we'll be putting it on the bar tomorrow. Hey everybody, Mark J. Larson here. Finally got the bar top done. It looks great. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. I'm going to take that off the thing there and off the tripod and give you a close up. But there's uh, there's zero flaws in it. It looks just beautiful. So, and don't forget to go and watch Coyote Whacker. I'll put his uh, channel link in the description of this. He's making a, a river table right now and it's going to look really cool so go check out my buddy over at Coyote Whacker and uh, like I said I'll, I'll give you a close up of this bar right now and as I said I uh, I rounded this end and I mean just look at the look at the gloss on it I mean look at the grain the grain actually changes underneath of that gloss as you move to different lighting because uh it's almost like a hologram, like I said. But, uh, I mean, here's the live edge. And it just, it just circles all the way around it. Comes back and goes right into the next live edge. And if you haven't seen the video, the video of me uh, building this bar, go check that out. I have all the details of building this bar, building these bar stools. They're all made out of pallets. And uh, they're they're both great videos. I had a great time building this bar. This is just this is old tin, refurbished tin, on here. And then got got my mason jars underneath of there. Shot glasses, a little bit of booze. I'm gonna have to stock it up. I just put this fridge in here, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it here. But I got this cubby hole here for maybe a smaller fridge or something, but. And then I trimmed it all out with this uh, cedar, but you can still tell it's made out of pallets. I made sure and left the other boards exposed so you can tell that it's made out of pallets. So, yeah, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. So, really appreciate everybody watching this. I, I don't. I'm hoping this video doesn't run too long, but I just wanted to get this bar top out there and, and let you see it. I mean, I'm. I'm super happy with the way it turned out and uh, I appreciate every little bit of support that everyone's been giving me and uh, just keep watching and uh, we'll keep coming up with some more things for you, some more cool stuff I hope, but uh, good luck with everything.